Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Now in this video I am going to discuss the topic resolution of vectors and uh, we are going to see two ways. One is a not so popular way and the other one is the popular way. Now first let us see the not so popular way. Now suppose you have vector A and vector B two vectors and they are non-zero vectors non-zero vectors okay now let's say a is directed in this direction this is vector a and b is directed in this direction okay and they are coplanar okay now let's say there is another vector vector a It also lies on the same plane as vector A and vector B. Now, if this vector A can be represented along the three sides of a triangle so that vector A, vector B and vector A are represented as like say this is vector A. So, if I multiply this vector by a scalar quantity lambda and if I multiply this quantity vector b by another scalar quantity mu so that now this is lambda times vector a and this is mu times vector b and let's say this this incomplete side is vector a okay so now i have expressed vector a in terms of these two vectors lambda a and mu b such that I have vector a is equal to lambda a plus mu b. So if in case this vector a can be expressed like this then we say that we have resolved a into two components. Resolved means breaking into components ok. So we have resolved a into two components so these are the two components okay these are the two components okay and these components this component is in the direction of vector a and this component is in the direction of b so this is one way of resolving a vector resolution is same as resolving that is breaking into components so i have broken this vector a into two components lambda a and mu b so this is one way of resolving a vector. Now there is another popular way of resolving vectors that is resolving the vectors along the coordinate axis ok. Now suppose we have so now let us resolve this vector learn to resolve the vector along in two dimensions. So this is suppose x axis this is y axis and this is suppose vector some vector say let us say force and this force is acting at an angle theta with the horizontal direction ok with the horizontal axis. So in this case it is x axis. So now I can resolve this force into two components. So component along x axis is fx x denotes the component of f along x axis. So similarly this component along y axis is fy ok. Now I can complete a rectangle in this place so that for that rectangle fy and fx are the two adjacent sides ok. So now if I take this right angle triangle cos theta will be how much? Cos theta is base by hypotenuse. So length of this side is fx, so it is fx by f. So this gives fx is equal to f cos theta. So that means this component is f cos theta. So this is the component of f along x axis. Fy is the component of f along y axis. Component also means also it is called projection. You can call it as component or projection both are same ok. 
So now similarly, in the same triangle, if I take sin theta, sin theta. So now since this is a rectangle, length of this side and length of this side are same. So this is Fy. So that means this is also Fy. So sin theta is Fy by hypotenuse. Length of this side is F. So it is Fy by F. So this gives Fy is equal to F sin theta. Okay. So that means these are the two components of F. F cos theta along x axis and F sin theta along y axis. So I can write vector f. You see, see, this is the component along x axis. So this component is along x axis. How to give direction to this component? I cap is the unit vector along x axis. So I can write fx i cap. Similarly, this is fy j cap. Now what is fx? fx is this quantity. So f is equal to f cos theta i cap plus f sin theta j cap okay so this is another way of expressing the resolution or resolving a vector into components now suppose we wish to resolve the vectors in three dimensions okay so this is two dimensions next we will resolve we'll try to resolve this vector in three dimensions now let's see how to resolve a vector into three components, three mutually perpendicular components. Now suppose this is vector A and this vector is making an angle alpha with x-axis. So Ax is the component of A along x-axis. Okay. Now for Ax component as in the previous case, in this case vector F makes an angle theta with x with respect to x axis so the x component of this force was f cos theta so similarly <coughs> if this vector a makes an angle alpha with x axis ax is the component of a along x axis so i can write ax is equal to a cos alpha now if this vector similarly this vector makes an angle beta with y axis so if ay is the component of a along y axis then a y will be equal to a cos beta suppose this vector a makes an angle gamma with z axis or z axis so that this component is a z or a z so in that case a z will be equal to a cos gamma okay so these are the component of a along x axis y axis and z axis so that i can write vector a is equal to this is the component along x axis so ax i cap plus this is the component along y axis so it is ay j cap az k cap Okay, and how about the magnitude of this vector A? Magnitude of vector A, it will be how much? Ax square plus Ay square plus Az square. Okay, so this is the way of expressing or resolving a vector into three components. This is for three components, this is for two components. Okay, so these are the basic concepts for resolution of vectors into rectangular components in this case it is rectangular components for three dimension or three when you are resolving vector into th three components there will be a formation of cuboid okay so this is as per as per your ncrt book page number 69 and 70 71 so i hope this video is beneficial and it is able to clarify your doubts and strengthen your concepts on the topic resolution of vectors. So good luck for your preparation.